Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening to you all. Out there in Cyberland, you know, with your grace for the Grace Station Bible study. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. God's grace is greater, right? God's grace is Come on, somebody the say that. Oh, I got these mics hot tonight. God's grace is greater. The greatest. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Good evening. Glad you guys have joined us. We are just going to... I'm excited about we'll something that you back. started this morning. And leave it up to her. Well, you know, these thoughts come. Leave it up to her to start something up in the spirit and get me <laughs> juiced up this morning. Uh, the Lord, he always gives me something. We're, we are always thinking and talking about the condition of yeah. Of life, of spiritual stuff, what God is trying to say, and what God is always. Can, can we see who's on this evening so we can say hi to all the people that have joined us? Praise the Lord! I'm looking around, Whew. man. Tonight, you, you, mm -hmm. I'm telling you guys, you don't want to miss tonight. Boy, well, I don't think you want to miss any night, honestly. But <laughs> here we are. But I, I definitely feel like tonight is special. We're going to wait for some people to join on. Let me know when we start getting some people on. Praise the Lord, everybody. All right, we got some people jumping on now. Let us know who's out there, if you don't mind. Uh, let us know Give who's us a out there, out. Where, where you guys are from. Share, share, share with your family and friends. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what's important is getting the word out. Oh boy. Well, it's been an awesome day. It's been an awesome week. <laughs> it's been cold outside. <laughs> very, very cold. Yes, but, it has. You know, we've been having some good, um, good conversations about All right. the Lord. We got Gene on there. Gene's on fire hey, tonight. Guys. I already seen that. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord, Gene. Mm -hmm. Glad I hope Renee's with you. You guys have joined us. Yeah. Yeah, you know me. I'm more. Yeah, I already go because we'd be all over here. <laughs> We're going to be. Uh, I like to see who I'm talking I to. Know, I want to say hi to my people. Go ahead. Everybody, Go ahead. make sure uh, let us know who's watching. Now we're starting to jump. I, I was going to say I know we're not real popular, but we're a little bit better than that, huh? <laughs> well, people taking uh -huh. their time to come out. There they are. Here they come, Kathleen. Yeah. And Freddie, Freddie, man, he always gives us hugs from Philadelphia. Well, I'm good. Yeah, I feel that hug too, Freddie. Mm -hmm. Hope the wife's doing well been praying for her actually i'm glad she is doing better praise the lord praise the lord yep <laughs> we're going to get into the word here in a few minutes i'm just waiting for a couple more people to jump on yes and renee sends her oh i'm sending a love back he, he showed i seen him on facebook today he had a five Five string bass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's looking good. Mm -hmm. um, okay. get, getting it done. Yes, the numbers have numbers. improved. Yes, awesome. praise God for that. A good praise report of healing. Yes, we do believe in healing. Now there, there's Frank. There's Frankie. Uh, Frankie Frank. What's up, Frank? He says, "Top of the evening, y'all." So we're going to get in. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, people will have to watch it later or catch up. You know, it started with a conversation this morning, and I'm not going to mention names, and <laughs> but it is what it is. A little birdie told him. I, I, I really come to learn in the last couple days that the message that we bring, whenever you bring truth, uh, you're not going to be real popular. Uh, it's going to bring people out, but I, you know, I really, I really feel there's a reformation taking place that once people catch on to this. You know, then the message, the truth is going to become real popular in a season. But I also know there's a season that so many people have been de deceived in Christianity. And our calling is 
for us to go and get people out of the darkness to bring them to the light. But, the, but there's a problem with that. The problem is it takes time. It takes time for the mind to be renewed. Now, there's a lot of times... What's up, Chuck? Let's go, what Chuck. Up? Well, hold on. I'm going to say something here. Oh, okay. It takes time. you got to plant seeds. And, and seeds don't spring up. They don't spring up right away. So there's a season that you guys have planted seeds in people's hearts. And it takes time for those to take root. And, and actually to up, you know, I think of the wheat and tears that they got to grow up together. Mm -hmm. So you, you got to let them grow up together. So you're encouraging people today. Yes. To you're show that mm -hmm. it's not a popular, well, it should be the most popular method. It's, but it, it can be. It, it probably should be. <laughs> yes, it but should be. The message of the gospel was uh -huh. not our, we didn't author it, of course. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're just. You know, noise in it abroad the What's way up, that Kim? it should have been. But right. It's just amazing though because it's right in the same Bible. Right. But everybody's re reading. I'm like. Right. But it's they're a, afraid to believe it or right. they don't understand it or the gist of it, which is understandable because it takes okay. time to like go through and takes time to read it and digest the information. Digesting but, it. Right. Yeah, right. Like studying it. Right. I'm going to lay it kind of like a foundation, but. Mm -hmm. uh, because I really feel this. So, you know, I really feel that our message, we are not going to get popular, let's face it, because we carry this truth. If they didn't like Jesus, they're not going to like us. If they didn't like Paul, they're not going to like us because we bring this message of truth. But that's when I realized it ain't about being popular because, you know, I would rather be unpopular and bring out a few than to be popular and bring out none. I really felt that in the spirit. Okay. So we're going, you know, I'm not going to hold back. I'm not going to hold back in this season. I'm coming right at uh, legalism. I'm coming at Judaism. I, I just got to do it because it's my mandate. Every time I try to get away from it or, or try to be uh, sugar it down or water it down a little bit, it just doesn't, it's, it's not my calling. Mm -hmm. And I want to, I want to love our, it's love that wants to bring people out. It's the love. I don't want to see our brothers and sisters in Christ. And I have another, I have some people in the ministry that sees truth and they're like, well, you can't be so hard attacking. Well, you know, Jesus didn't, Jesus was for, like I said earlier, I put a post, Jesus was for the whore, the prostitute, and he was for the sinners. He was showing them the agape love for them. And he hated the religious people. He because, called them snakes. He called them, you know. Well, he was a fighter for the poor. Right. And those who mm -hmm. were being oppressed by mm -hmm. the system. Right, right. A system that would promise them <laughs> extra, you know, all this. Jesus says, please don't hold back. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's like, you know, yeah. this system promised them all this stuff, but yet mm -hmm. they weren't achieving it. Right, right. You know, right? But, yes. What's up, Josh? Glad to see you on the kiln. Right. So go ahead and tell him. And, and, tell him. and Bebo. <laughs> but ahead. yeah, I got some stuff that I want to speak about. Go but, ahead and tell him. you know, all of a sudden when all the churches shut down or, you know, because they're closing down because of the pandemic, all of a sudden you start to see all these prophets all over Facebook. And, mm -hmm. you know, everything, uh, well, what does a prophet speak? A prophet speaks, speaks of the future of. What's going to happen in your future? You're always coming out. Years and years, you're still going to come out. Years and years, you're going to be blessed. Uh, years and years, uh, sow a seed in the good ground, and, mm -hmm. and God's going to bless you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you come to see truth, you actually come to see, I'm not saying all prophets is, 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 mm -hmm. are, are deceived mm -hmm. or deceiving people, mm -hmm. but you start to see more and more that they are in a place yeah. that they're trying to get themselves to a, a finish works yep. and they're trying to get people that's listening because they can only lead you of what they know or what's coming out of them. Mm -hmm. So they're leading people to this sense of hope that God's going to do something in the future for them. And, and, and I started to read into that, and actually, you really, you really broke something open for me. And uh, we started talking about, you know, I look at it as spiritual abandonment, right? 
Spiritual abandonment. Yep, being abandoned from the spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, because see, if you if you are disconnected, if you are like you said, suffering from uh, a separation. This is so powerful. Mm -hmm. What she said. Mm -hmm. People are suffering from a separation, from a sense of separation, yes. and now it's from ignorance because. God said, I will never leave you, never forsake you. God is always there. Mm -hmm. We were made, created in the image of God, but we ourselves, which I call sin, is not knowing our true identity, and we suffer, we suffer from that separation. So when I see these prophets speaking that God's going to do this, and, and, and I'm telling you, people are, are, people are captivated by this. They've got five and six and seven hundred people watching them saying hallelujah praise god you know and all the prophets got to do is say god is bringing you out we're coming into a season you sow a seed god's going to bring you out and all you of a sudden people people oh, are awesome. in such su people are suffering so much from separation of false identity mm -hmm. they are captivated by this because they're starving and they're hungry to come out of this mm -hmm. And, and what happens here is that you become, if you start to feel separated, and I have done this, and man, I've done this a lot of times in my early walk with Christ, I, I actually started to feel forsaken. I actually started to feel, is God mad at me? Because see, a religious mindset, a religion or someone who's suffering from separation mm -hmm. is, is coming from a religious mindset. That's the root. Which is, mm -hmm. you were having to do something to get something. Yep, so, you, meaning you're having a to merit please. system. I think yeah. it's all about them saying you have to be pleasing to God. Yes. Mm -hmm. But without faith, you aren't going to be pleasing no matter what. So, Hold you got to first have the faith. Before we get to the faith, you gotta have I've faith got, I got that down here. Yeah, because I mean, uh -huh. they, they have you saying you got, it's a conditional blessing. Right. right. If you do good, you get good. If you do bad, you get bad. Mm -hmm. But there are people that do bad and still get good. Right. So that can't be. How many times? The equation. Uh, the, yeah, it's right. a disconnect in that equation here. Okay. What's up, Casey? Good to see you on tonight. And Josh. That's not always. I got a question. How mm -hmm. many times have you guys? I know I've done this a lot. Mm -hmm. I was in a, a I was in a spiritual separation and suffering, and any time that. Things didn't happen for, for me because I was trying to work things to get to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Many times I tried to work, you know, whether it be so, a tithing or sowing seed or or praying harder or fasting. I I do all these things to get God to move, and He didn't move. Mm -hmm. And then I'd be I'd be like, Is God mad at me? What did I do? You know. Mm -hmm. Did I do something wrong for God to be mad at me? Mm -hmm. See, those are just fruits of being separated from who you are in Christ. And it's being under a legalistic mindset. Actually, Martin Luther King called it spiritual depression. And you called it suffering from depression, uh, separation, which is powerful. So many people are suffering from that separation through a religious teaching, right? Now, I hope you guys are getting this, because you could be dealing with it today. You could be dealing with this today unknowingly, because I think we all have. We all question God when things ain't moving right in our life, when things ain't. But see, like you said, it takes faith. Sometimes it... Sometimes when it feels like God is against you, come on, y'all, you know what I'm talking about. And and you, if you ever got to a place where it feels like God is against you, and sometimes I've seen people, you know, think that God even is their enemy, and and God is not moving or the favor, you know, is not moving, then they gotta feel like they gotta earn God because, but really, like you said, what they're dealing with in this suffering of the uh, separation. Is lack of faith. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's like being one with God, mm -hmm. being one with Christ, Among. right? I mean, being like one. He tells the husband to you know treat his wife as he would his own body, right? Mm -hmm. And that was meaningful because we are the body mm -hmm. of Christ, so He treats us like one. And if we he, are one. So yeah. why would He not? Why would He tell 
the husband uh-huh. to treat his wife as one, like he would love his own body and, and would do everything for it, that was a testament of what he was going to do and how he would see us and treat us. But we we mm-hmm. have to right. reckon ourselves as one as well, like reckon yourself dead to the old and new to the I mean alive to the new and being alive in Christ is being a part of his body, right? And that body he will treat as himself. So if he treats you bad, he's going to be treating himself. Come on. That's why if you, he said, if you did it to the least of these, you did it unto me. Yes. If you're doing, you know what I mean? So he's really showing what his, where his heart is. And for the people that rely on him, mm-hmm. that rely, yeah. totally, solely rely. That's there the condition is people he wants you that, to be in. Totally pe- rely There is so many people, and I've been in through that season, and I know some people has been there with me. That you have totally read a light on Christ. Well, you were sold out for Christ, but you wasn't doing it by faith. You were doing it by <laughs> works. You were doing it by a merit system because a re- and fear because a religious pastor told you that you needed to do these things in order to get God to move or that blessing to follow up on your life. But the problem is, what happened was that created a separation, and we suffer from that separation. And, and even Jeremiah, and let me say this real quick. I want to get this one scripture out. Jeremiah 27, he felt, and now look what he says to the, he says, O oh Lord, he says, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and has prevailed. You, you, you see. And thou art stronger than I, and has prevailed. Yeah. Prevailed. Right. Like, you beat me up right you're now. You're beating me up. You, you're stronger than me. Ain't nothing I can do. See, but see, that comes from a ignorance, or it comes from suffering of, supper, or, or from separation. Because, see, it, if, it, it takes faith, right? You have to know that you are one with Christ, and you've always been one with Christ, right? But if somebody is under a legalistic or religious mindset, they're trying to work. They're trying to create a man's path to God. That's what I call religion, is a man's path, a man's made path to God. To get, They're climbing to get back up to something that God has for them, and God's already done it for them. Mm-hmm. So just for the fact that they're trying to get somewhere where they're already at shows me the suffering of separation they of, of, ig- of ignorance mm-hmm. right and I'm going to go into I want to go to you were talking about faith yeah I um, you know I like to call it spiritual uh, separation that's what it, it's a spiritual separation and it creates anxiety it, it creates to where, God, where are you at? How come you're not work operating my life? Why is life so bad? Why, you know, it, it, it's it's a depression. I've, I've experienced that. I've been so mad at God, and I don't even want to, mm-hmm. I don't even want to talk about how mad I've been at God and went out in my backyard and had some long conversations with them. But see, every it, it wasn't his bad. Every he's everything he's done, he's already done in the spiritual he's already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places and he's not changing, right? Mm-hmm. It was me that was su- suffering from this lack of knowledge and it creates depression, it creates anxiety. It, it, it it's a despair. It, it's you can get into a panic mode because God's not you know, people are teaching you all these things to do, and you're fasting, and you're praying, and you're going into your prayer closet for eight hours, and you're not hearing God, and you're tithing, and you're sowing seed, and nothing's moving, and God's not changing. It's you that needs to change, right? Right. Hmm. So Paul says this. Let's go to Galatians 3. We'll start there. Sorry, babe. I had to get that out. Well, can I add? It, it, yeah, I want you to add. I've just been brewing so, this up for a while Well, now. let me say this. Um, mm-hmm. That the idea of, you know, if God is not moving when you mm-hmm. want him to move, then there's something wrong with you. Right. There's something left undone in you. You know, they start to, you know, make mm-hmm. you examine yourself, you know, because it's oh, like yeah. they, they give you this... <laughs> 
conflicts. Oh, don't, don't even get me started the conflicts they give you as if, you know, I'm like, we've done everything you could possibly can do. Come what on. else is there? Then they go, well, it must be something wrong with your thinking. There's yes. some unforgiveness in your heart. And all these <laughs> now, see, possibilities, right, no. that really have no... And then they get you examining yourself. And when you go, well, he was blessed. He was going to bless me anyway. He was blessing me as is. <laughs> but yet, it's like it's interesting that that is the, the go-to, right? Mm -hmm. So then that's where this whole, well, I got to do better to get God to bless me. Yep. I got to do everything possible i gotta be so good and if i do wrong or do something wrong in my mind that i think god is gonna yeah, punish you, you me work, you, you're you work five days for the hammer to, waiting for the hammer to right go. and and there's times you go through seasons maybe five seven days you've been perfect you've been acting right and all of a sudden you slip up and all of a sudden you just go from the top to the bottom that actually reminds me i seen a i seen <laughs> oh, i seen a pastor praying mm -hmm. for a guy and he was wanting him to get speaking tongues right mm. and he kept i mean he was you guys call it laboring but he was laboring with this guy i think everybody's trying to get this guy speaking tongues for some years from what i hear but he was laboring with this guy to get him to speak in tongues and the guy wasn't you know he just kept on oh jesus 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 that's the only thing he would say jesus jesus, <laughs> jesus. and it wasn't good enough for that pastor mm -hmm. That pastor looked at him and said, I'll tell you right now, I know the problem. You're not going to receive the Holy Spirit until you clean up some things in your life. And when I heard that, and, and just, oh my and God. And mind you, they ain't been telling him this for years. He's been cleaning and sweeping and all that. So he finally <laughs> right, was, right. forget it. Poor guy. How much more sweeping and cleaning I got to do, you right, know? Right, right. And he just lost faith because he was watching... Other people would receive the Holy Spirit, and they were out here doing the absolute most, doing all absolute kind of stuff, most. and he just lost his faith almost as if, yeah, well, just... I do more than these people who have the Holy Spirit, and I see them cheating on their wives and doing all this other stuff, and yet they have the Holy Spirit, they have the, the Holy same Spirit. Holy Come Spirit on. I'm trying to get. Mm. And you're telling me I need to clean. And mind you, the person that was telling him that also had issues in his own life and had done yes. some things. So he really couldn't, you know, get be the judge of him. But yet, that in that moment, that was the go-to. That's what you're taught to tell people. This is what you've been, you know, the driving force. Because it's like, well, yeah, surely that there pastor must be was only wrong. telling them the mm. way that he was he's trained. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. I'm talking about. This is in probably, I'm guessing, 95, 98% of the Christian church. And that's how broken the church is today. That's why the Lord, I've just got to come at people. And, and like I said, I ain't trying to get popular. And, and those who have ears will hear what the Spirit is saying. We're here to bring people out. I'm not here going to teach something that's going to keep people in just so, so it, it, it can uh, it scratch the... or. Uh, Scratch, scratch their itch or give them a hype <laughs> until next Sunday and try to speak up some hype to get them to run around the church. It sounds like right? that woman at the well. Yeah. And they kept saying, you would have draw this water, you're going to still be thirsty. Come on. You got to keep coming back. You know, keep water, coming back to you know, this water because you're going to stay gonna keep, thirsty. You're going to stay thirsty. Where right. is the living water, though? I mean, okay, they tell you when you were feet, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. that is okay. the living water. Yep. But then they talk you out of the power of this Holy Spirit you have, if that's the case, as if he, Man, we're he's talking not real operating stuff. in you the way he could because you got some things you need to work out. Mm. But I'm thinking interesting, though, because that's supposed to be this living water. That's supposed to bring you to wholeness. That's supposed to get you in faith and stay in faith and keep you, right. you know, at peace, right. I guess, and content and all that. Mm. Well, obviously there's some missing piece here. There's a disconnect. Because there, there are many people in the church who re receive the Holy Spirit in one form, but not the knowledge and understanding yeah, of what right, they have. Right, right. And, and, and the thing that you hit me with is I see so many uh, I see so many people running to church every Sunday and running to the altar because they're trying to connect with God to something, and, and they're reaching and doing it through all kinds of different works to get there when they already the, the work's already been completed. So you can see... You, you can see the disconnect is God saying, look, I already done everything I'm going to do. I sit down in victory at the right hand of the Father. I'm chilling. Mm -hmm. Everything I've done for you, I've already done. And, and you've got all these people. Yeah, that's, 
uh, yeah, have faith yeah, in have it. Have faith and in it. You got all these other people trying to perform and and starving and hunger and suffering and doing this and that and getting mad at God because they're doing all the things that the uh, the pastor, which is deceived. I mean, a pastor can only teach you what he knows. So if he's not right in the right thinking with God, he's obviously he's going to mislead the people that's watching him. And there's so many. Huh, Man, I could go. I can get on fire right now because I remember when I first came to Christianity, and I I was thirsty for God. Somebody told me I had a calling. I was an apostle, and I was excited. And I started running to every church, listening to the word. I was hearing the same hype, getting me juiced up. I was out buying all these books. I'm talking, I don't know, 50, 60 books, which I threw away now because they were garbage. And, and But see, at that time, I didn't know that. At that time, well, I was down. thirsty. I was digging. I right, was right. suffering from that separation of not knowing God's truth. I'm talking to people right now that that needs to hear this message. And, and, and the thing about it is, it's a time, it's a season that God wants to use you to get this message out. Now, you're not going to be, you're not going to be popular. You're not going to be famous. But I tell you one thing, the people that you do bring out, man, they're going to be so grateful because there's people that we have brought out. And it took time. And some, you know, some came quicker than others. But the people that really came, I mean, they're like, oh, my God, it's been in the Bible this whole time. And I've read this Bible ten times, and I've never seen this. It reminds me uh -huh. of Aquila and Priscilla. Uh -huh. They were tent makers. They yep. were glamorous. But yet, they carried right. a message that transformed right. speakers mm -hmm. like Apollos, you know, at the time. So, you know what I mean? That, but then that. From that, rather, he took that message and then just conformed and transformed more and more people. He was a great speaker. He did all that. And so they gave him the, the answer that he didn't have yet, you know. They right. told him about Christ. Yep. And he, they were followers of Paul. Come on. So, you know, it's a, it's a trickle-down effect. So when you think that you're not doing much, actually, oh, you have that's to doing right. the most. Right. Because that one person can well, touch lives well, and all well, yeah, exactly. I mean, Paul Titus started over 43 churches. So, yeah, so, so the message can yeah. come out and it can change lives. The right but I'm telling you, the body has to do this and people need to recognize if you see I truth, God just didn't give you truth to sit on your couch and watch Jerry Springer or whatever. He get, he's giving you the truth so you can uh, bring the light to be the, the, the light, you know, to be to the be city, to be the city on the hill. So people can look at you and see the power of God working through you so you can change lives. Amen. Amen. Because, see, I can have a thousand people come in our church every Sunday, but if they're not getting truth, that's not a very big ministry. I can have one person come to church and they're actually getting the truth is more more it's a bigger church than the tenth or the thousand that's coming because you, you're only speaking of what they call that uh, right. yeah you're only speaking a miss basically oh, yeah. if you're speaking if if you're not speaking truth and I'm gonna show you something here in Galatians 3 we're already a half an hour into this message I feel like whew, mm -hmm. you, you messed me up today, baby. <laughs> that was the Lord gave us. It, it, well, yeah, I know it's the Lord. It's awesome one. But but I see Suffering I see from some the separation. I see so much spiritual uh, separation, anxiety in, mm -hmm. in the church, and people are starving for God. And see, it's not the people's fault, and they're they're feel like they're doing everything they need to do. To, they want to get there, but the problem is, is they're trying to go through a gate that's not open and and it's narrow is the gate that leads people to christ and it's for our us job our job as the body of christ to guide people to that light now look what look what paul says here in galatians 3 but um, he says here in galatians 3 1 he says oh foolish galatians who has bewitched you now you know, I preach this Galatians stuff because that right there will bring people out. When you go to Galatians and you want to get people out of the law, I mean, Galatians, well, actually, Romans and Hebrews, it's all good. But the key thing is, is when you come up with topics, you can still go back to these books and chapters 
and see it more you get more revelation out of it in different topics but he says oh foolish Galatians who has bewitched you mm -hmm. that you shall not obey the truth mm -hmm. before those eyes Jesus Christ have been uh, evidence set forth uh, crucified among you this only what I learn of you did you receive the Spirit? Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? See, you got so many people trying to receive the Spirit through works or through sowing good seed into good ground. Or, or you know, you need to fast for, do the Daniel fast for 20. I, I, I never did that. That's, if somebody can fast for 21 days, they God ought to do something for them. But... <laughs> But, but did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, but are now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered in so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? Yet therefore that ministers uh, minister, minister it to you, the Spirit and works miracles among you? Do you do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as, I know you teach really good on this chapter, but he's, he, uh, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, right? Mm -hmm. it, so Abraham had this belief of God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, but you got all these other people out here in Christianity believes God a different way for righteousness, right? And they try to do it through a works, or I want to call it a merit system, but it's all part of the works of the law, right? Uh, I'm trying to work on down here to 12 and 13, but it says, Know you therefore that they which are of faith as the same are the same children as Abraham? of Abraham and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preach before the gospel unto Abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed right so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham right verse 10 blows my mind when you tell somebody that's in a religious institution every Sunday in tithing and you tell them that they're under a curse, they look at you like they you lost your mind. This is this is why you're not popular. And you're trying to get them a, a, here. I'm trying to give you a here's a freedom card to get you out of that curse. And they look at you like you're crazy. It says for whosoever is under the works of law is under a curse. For it is written, curses everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them right but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God it is evidence for the just shall live by faith here's the key scripture that I was building to when you talked about faith it says the law is not of faith the law is not of faith the law is not of faith. I want to get that deep in your spirit because there's so many people, man, that's suffering from that separation because of what they believe. Now, the opposite of faith, right there, if you guys see this, I want you to hear this. The opposite of faith is not fear. The opposite of faith is the law. And out of that law comes fear. So, you see so many people, mm, glory to God, hallelujah, come on Jesus. You see so many people, and it, it, it hurts me, because I was once one of those people that start, I would drive hours to go see a preacher somewhere, just because they put him on a pedestal and he had this anointing, they said, and actually, I drove, actually, I remember driving somewhere for two hours, and I listened to this preacher, and he said, everybody in here is sow a seed today, and you'll never be broke another day of your life. And this is a TBN guy, I ain't mentioned names, and he's, he, man, he, he knew how to set the stage, he knew how to get in your wallet, mm -hmm. and, 
and you know here I am he's you sow a sacrificial seed because you ain't got much money because you're under a curse, right? Mm -hmm. So you're already busted and disgusted and can't be trusted, right? But, so you sow your money, a sacrificial seed, and all of a sudden you go three years and all of a sudden this still hasn't happened. And now you start to wonder, well, what the heck's going on, you know? That, that, that prophet... That I'm man of God, that a highly anointed man of God said, I would never be broke another day of my life. And I'm sitting here trying to make uh, sugar cookies out of flour and sugar. You done invest, huh? invested huh? all of your money. Done invested it's all a, my money, my time his, in the books. In the, I'm trying to save somebody <laughs> some time, money. And, and listen to me. We've been there, done that years, and I know you guys know what wow. I'm talking about. You bought a lot Hallelujah. of stock in that. <laughs> huh? You bought a lot of stock. Oh, man. I you invested I, your money. In well, that. honestly, I was somebody out there. I knew there was a God, but when somebody pulled me in and says, Hey, you got a calling on your life. You are an apostle. You're called to be an apostle. All of a sudden, you get this identity. Finally, hey, I got an identity, man. And, you know, they... They say, you're going to have a big TV ministry, and, you, man, you get pumped up, and, you know, God's going to bless you. God's going to do this and that, and not to say that he's not, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you you immediately fall into that, mm -hmm. and then you, you're starving because there's still separation. Mm -hmm. There's still a separation in a mindset, and you go through a legalistic church, and it, it just separates you more. Mm -hmm. And But see, but there comes a time, whew, when the Spirit actually comes and awakens you to righteousness, that wake that takes you out of that darkness. But see, it takes a man of God. So it, it can take a man of God. It can just take the Spirit Himself. That'll reach. There's a point in time by the Father. I know this. Wake that He comes it. and He shakes you and He wakes you up to righteousness, to the truth. Right. That brings you out of that darkness. And see, then you say, "Wow, I'm glad I went through that darkness because." I'm, it's so good that I went through that darkness that I can now see the light. And see, many people who's been through years of ministry and darkness, see, now, like the teacher here, the doctor here, she is so good and, and profound in God's Word because she spent so many years like Paul. Man, she was a, a Pharisee of the Pharisee. Can I, can I talk bad about you? Can I talk bad about you <laughs> no, for just you a second? <laughs> she was a Pharisee. That was a Pharisee. God help me. And I was a keeper of the law. And he was a keeper, people. condemning people, standing on you their heads, the hell, you don't standing on their chest, and saying, "You will mean. speak in tongues tonight." Uh, whatever. <laughs> I gotta add some fun to it, of course. But it wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah. But now I, that I she's, didn't labor with but now that she, you know, God has used me to bring the light. Now she can. Man, she sees the whole thing. Ooh, I mean, I don't know how to describe it. You could probably describe it better than me. Oh, it was liberating. Yeah. Yeah. It's liberating. It, it liberates it, you. No from, more separation. Well, if you feel like all that work you were doing was going to justify you, mm. then you start to lose your faith in that work once the truth comes. Because the work is what you feel is building up your a bank account it would go right and here's your bank account or your spiritual account is is overflowing the, the more good you do Come on. and the good you are and the more you ask for forgiveness and the more clean you live and all that right and those have benefits but does it get you to wholeness does it, it really get you to where you need to be? Because no, because as soon as you mess up, it just erases all the, you yeah. know, the good you've done, right? Okay, Come one on. mess up Come or on. anything like that. One thought, you got to ask for forgiveness again, then you'd be all right. But then you go, well, Lord, if I keep asking for the same thing, forgiveness from the same thing, then <laughs> when are you, when am I going to not do it anymore? When am I not going to be delivered? When am I, when am I going to be not asking you for this right, over and over right, and over, right? right? And this is what I found like people had to deal with when yeah. I was dealing with people getting filled with the Holy Spirit and then they would come back and they say, but I still have these desires and I still have this. What do I do? And then all this kind of stuff. And you go, well, you need to pray more. You need to fast more. 
You need to come to church all the time. You need to get in the choir. You need to get busy doing you other stuff. You must, and have, done, young people you must have done something wrong. Or, or yeah, but you, yet they can still... You need, you need, you need, you need, you need, you need. And then you fear you're going to lose the Holy Ghost. Right. If you, you oh, yeah. Right, they right, throw right, that at you, too. Mm. And they're going to lose their Holy Spirit the more they do wrong. But I would see people, mm, that, come on. you know, that were doing a lot of things. And they were not... They were still speaking in tongues. So... If that were the requirement, it seemed like that wasn't what was happening anymore from what they were. So the disconnect was what they said would happen didn't happen. There was no proof of any of that, of what they were saying. So you believe that, though, mm -hmm. because that's the fear. Yep, Like you think that sometimes, you know, when you wake up to the reality, but that's the fear that they use to control you and to keep you coming to the church and staying in, in, in that particular church too. Because yeah. like, you can't go to anybody else's church. They now, don't have what yeah, they Yeah, I'm going to ask they you. They don't have what we got. Yeah, I'm going to ask you something right in line <laughs> with that, and I'm sure some people out there can relate. Mm. How many times have you been to a church service, you know, they, they go through their little routine, and all of a sudden they want to bring people up at the end and pray over people. And, and, you know, it might be a smaller church, maybe 10 or 15 people there. And all of a sudden, everybody has a calling or everybody's going to be a pastor, right? And, oh, you got a calling on your life. You need to come here and, and get in tune and, mm -hmm. and, and get tapped into this ministry. And, and, so and, in it. Uh huh? Sowing in it with service. Sowing so in it with... Sowing so in it with service. Honestly, I, I <laughs> see that. I've seen it a long time ago. I'm thinking, man, they just everybody's going to be a pastor. They're just... Mm -hmm. trying to build a ministry mm -hmm. not to say that some of those guys might have a ministry a, a calling on their life but you get to see oh man you get this this hermit and and honestly you know it's like wow it, it just to see those things is kind of deceiving just knowing that it's deceiving and there's some legitimate cases where <laughs> sure. they would be but it's it's been exploited so much yes i think it causes people to and, and to like right. want that like they desire that becomes an idol mm. it, becomes it becomes like idolatry almost. yes it is so. idolatry and and just to see these like i was talking about all these prophets if you have a prophet that's speaking a word i want you all to think about this i mean come mm. on you, 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 idolize got, men. Huh? you become to you come yeah, all of a sudden men. You, you you start to idolize this prophet because he's speaking all this good stuff to and makes you feel good to the flesh and it's easy to build a big ministry or to get people on your page and all of a sudden, you know, share, share, share. And then you always see, uh, you know, PayPal or whatever, which is not a bad Cash thing. App. Cash <laughs> It's not a bad thing if, you tr if, you're, if you're teaching truth. But if you're teaching people to do it through money to get God to bless you, then you're deceiving people, actually. And they're separated. Well, you right? don't have to pay for the truth. It's but, right, it, it, right. That's he the, is the this, truth. This is the problem with right. it. Mm -hmm. Because when you're paying for it, you uh -huh. really aren't getting the word. You can go to the word and get the you, a better word. Paul, the yes. right now word God can speak to you through this word than any more so than you can yes. from you know, other people. You right know, now, Paul you know. says to so sow into the household of faith. Give into the household of the same household of faith. So it's good to support a ministry, but are you are you supporting someone deceiving people? You have to really look at this. Are you supporting someone you're that's investing, deceiving people? You're investing in that. You're investing in something that's, that's you know, and you do it ignorantly. I ain't trying, people just do it because they, you know, of lack of knowledge. People perish because of lack of knowledge. Well, it just shows the different things you can get caught up in. In, in mm. spiritual, um, it's this spiritually induced society, spiritually, you know, captivated society because it's like when things aren't great on the natural realm people are going to seek something mm -hmm. outside of that and and that's been the case because there's that void that the holy that the lord wants to feel himself but man kind of gets in the way i got the answer i got this and that and i you just pay me for it see when they start asking for all that kind of stuff it's like but you know um but they've learned that that's how the system works it's been working that way. A man is worthy it's for his hire and, and all this and kind see, of stuff, we, which we okay, we understand that because God we, set that system up too a little see, bit, like, but it's been exploited. Right, just like tonight's message or Bible study or what you want to call it, if people would watch us, the majority of Christian churches would get mad at us. 
Like, what are they talking about? Well, sound like, yeah. sound like they're, they're about... causing division in the church, and Jesus wasn't up. Well, actually, Jesus says, I didn't come to bring peace. I come to bring a sword. So Jesus <laughs> Jesus hated religion, and most people are not taught the difference in rightly dividing and seeing all this. But if most Christians, this is the problem, if most Christians would see this message tonight, they would get, you know, they would come against us, and here we are giving something that brings free, you know, freedom to them if they only really could comprehend that or, or at least study it for a while. It would bring uh, freedom to them. And yeah, because that last scripture down there. 13, Christ redeemed us. From the curse of the law. Yeah, Christ has redeemed us for, from the curse of the law to everyone who believes. Right, so he's redeemed he's being made a cur He was being made a curse for us. Yeah, so... For Christ to be of effect, and uh -huh. what is this effect? Right? right. His effect is what he came to bring was peace and reconciliation mm -hmm. between man and God. Okay. Uh oh, the oneness of you, we're back to not the separation anymore, but the reconciliation. So the reconciliation that Christ, the ministry of rec reconciling mankind to God is what we were given the mandate to go and reconcile get these people who thought they were still separate from god and reconcile yes, them yes. back through what christ had Shoot, already come done on. right yes so with this message he's redeemed you from the ball he paid the price you don't have to pay for the price of, of which was death you don't have to pay that price anymore it was paid for you so to be redeemed is is paid in full your debt is paid you don't owe god anything come on. but to believe him and to love him. He said, if he told man, don't owe, owe no man anything but nothing but to love him. Don't owe a man anything but to love uh, them. Loving them, right? That's You don't pay for love. It don't cost you anything to love. So if that's the case, if he requires that of man or said that to man, then that's what he, that's his mind. That's what he feels like your relationship should be with him as well. And that's what he came to do. So if someone robs you of that mm. reconciliation, then you are remaining in your separation. And now you suffer you, from that feeling of suffering. feeling forsaken, you feeling know, not cared for, being a spoiled brat about a lot of stuff because ain't, everything ain't going your way. So you therefore you start don't want you don't want to deal with God because you expected things to be blessing you and everything's falling in place every time all the time he never you know chastises you or never chases you or corrects or he gets you can, in, a, in yeah. maturity really to get us out of that baby stage and get us into the maturity can, can i yeah can i share something uh, mm -hmm. you know i have a family member and i'm not going to mm -hmm. mention their names but you know i haven't talked to this person in a long time and and they reached out to me and they said, you know, hey, I need your help. I know you're a man of God. I need to talk to you. I, I see uh, I see spiritual wickedness. I see shadows. I see things touching me. I see things. And, and, and I, wow. Uh, and, you know, I've been a part of this, been around, seen some stuff going, you know, from black magic and, and different things that Wicca and pe people get involved in this stuff. And so she called, she called me, and all of a sudden, the first thing that comes out of her mouth says, Gary, you know, I've tried my best to be good. You know, I try to do everything. You know, the Lord, I try not to make them mad. I, you know, and immediately I'm thinking, well, there's your problem. Right there's your problem. Is you see yourself separated, and whenever you see, whenever your mind has got your consciousness separated you start to you actually start to suffer and then you allow things to come in you allow things that's not of god to enter into your mind and you feel like these things are happening to you because you can't oh my god you can't keep these things you can't your your flesh can't get the things right in order for god uh you know to lift you up so now you're dealing with all this wickedness and and honestly <laughs> When I begin to pray for her, because I've seen it, it all comes from religion. It all comes from uh, not a solid foundation. Everything uh, then will stem from that. Mm. 
everything, all the fruits will manifest of wickedness when when you're not a faith. It's just what we're talking about. You're suffering from a separation. Mm. And when you're suffering from a separation, you're inviting everything that the curse brings, or everything that wickedness, that is darkness, that is sin. You're inviting uh, and you're going to bear the fruits of all those things that you are inviting in because you're not eating of the tree of life and, and, and faith. You, you, it's either one or the other. You can't do both. You can't be lukewarm. So immediately, I, you got something to say? Well, Go ahead and burst it out. It shows right there uh, right. where mm -hmm. he was telling the Galatians, mm -hmm. who messed you up? Right. Where where did you you, where, mm -hmm. you can did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Right. So it's like they're separ putting a separation. They they mm -hmm. were being separated because this this story starts with Paul writing to the Galatians who uh -huh. he had converted them and actually they were Gentiles. Uh, maybe some mixtures of the Jews I think that had believed on Christ and so forth through the, Paul's message of grace and not the works of the law so there were Judaizers that came down and told them you cannot be saved without following the law of Moses right. and which is the, full, the entire law that mm -hmm. came down at Mount Sinai when, when, when Moses came down with the law the ten commandments that he broke first and then he you know, got another set of them but yet from that that yeah, law, I always they, say he they, could, I always say he couldn't even keep the law. He broke them as soon as he came down. The fact ahead. that Moses was up on the mountain by himself is interesting because all the children of Israel could have been up there with him, but they were afraid. Right. They didn't want to hear his voice. They they, they were afraid of him because it was a thunder and lightning and all this stuff like that, but they didn't want to hear him. They wanted Moses to speak <laughs> or God to speak to Moses and then to them versus him talking to them directly. So therefore, he dispensed the law to these people who didn't want to hear him directly. Yeah. And right? So if you don't hear from God yourself, your flesh or the desires of the your mind will Come have on. you doing anything you want to do. Well, and yeah, anything, it says it right there. Right, that you Who's desire to do. Who's you that you shall not obey the truth? So, Who's bewitched you? So the works of the law were never a means to justify mankind's flesh. It was not there to justify it. It was there to expose it. Come on. It exposed Come on. it when a man, oh, man. without... God speaking to him directly, or you 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 don't believe Shoot, in him enough to even let God. him talk to you. Hallelujah. So how can you let him change and Come transform on. your life if you won't if you won't even hear it? You'd rather have the law speak and the Come words on. from the law. Don't let do this. Out. Don't do that. Don't do this. Move and then I bless you. But that's not what it should have been about. That wasn't the relationship that God wanted. He wanted oneness and communion. Let's talk. Let's communicate. Let me teach you things of things you don't know about. And spiritual things that you can't achieve through Come earthly, ma uh, earthly <laughs> things that you try to do, right? Mm -hmm. You can't even replace that. What is spiritual you get from the he who is spirit. God is spirit, so he's going to give you spiritual information. The flesh is all of the flesh, and it's going to give you fleshly information, carnal, what you see. Versus what you hear in the Come spirit, on. the hearing of faith Come is on. you can hear faith. You can hear this. Mm. It's a sound that it, it, it sparks yeah. yes. life in you. Yes. Like it's Come a on. jump start. It's almost like you yes. get, it, it, you know, it, it, like it awakens, a, it awakens you and it, it invigorates you to life because the reality of it is like I was trying to, to do it this way and it was zapping all the life out of me. Come on. Because it wasn't something you could ever achieve on your own, but yet you, you spend all your time trying to do it. Getting nowhere, right? And so now it's like the gerbil on the on the track. He, he, revelation. He feels feel like he's getting somewhere. Oh, man. But he's just, but he's, just out. he's on that track or that uh spinning wheel, whatever you want to call it, and he's getting nowhere. There's so many Christians I see today. And they're they're on that spinning wheel and they're running hard, man. They're trying to please God, get somewhere. They're trying but to exercise they still the, the flesh. Same, they still in the same cage. They ain't going nowhere. They're trying to exercise right. the flesh and tear and wear it out, but right. it, uh -uh. but it, <laughs> it'll deceive that's you. Where, that's where the body. I feel in the spirit. That's where the body is so important. And for you guys to come to know this truth is not for you just to keep. It's time for us to get bold. And go out and get people out of darkness. I mean, that's sure. your, that's your calling. 
uh, many people have different callings. We have different members of the body, and, and we all, you know, some have different gifts. But God's going to use those gifts to bring forth the body. Is going, the body is the truth, right? The body is the, the body of Christ that redeemed us from the curse of the law mm -hmm. is the truth. And there's many True members that in that body, right? right? There's many people that's a part of that body. And everybody that knows this message, you, you obviously, you come to know this truth and, and you'll continue to grow. You'll always grow in knowledge. Because once right? you see it, you yeah. can't unsee it. You can't unsee it, that's and, for sure. And you will want more because... First off, if that's true, then what else in here? <laughs> you right. know, and it's like the Lord starts to pour but you, the information into you more. But as you, you see it. But see, and, mm -hmm. one thing I the Lord's taught me about ministering to a family member is we got people in our own family. Come on, y'all. Our own family are just 10 digits or seven digits away from you planting seeds. And I, it takes me to your mom. I heard you and your mom. I'm not trying to put your mom on. I love your mom. Put her on spotlight. Huh? Ten digits. Well, if, you, if you're going to use the area code, yeah, <laughs> ten digits or seven digits. If you're not. But anyway, I heard, you know, I seen, I, I seen Sonia ministering to her mom and planting seeds. And all of a sudden, her mom's standing up for the gospel now. She's standing up for the truth against other people that's coming against her now. And, and see... You plant these seeds, people will come against you, but that's all right. There comes mm -hmm. a season when those seeds begin to grow, when somebody else starts to water those seeds, and, and that's happened with us. As I came in to plant some seeds, she ran me off with some, uh, what'd you have, chainsaw? Something. She tried to get, get me out of there because I was trying to give her the grace <laughs> message, and she wasn't having it at the time. But then she goes and turns on, I planted some seeds, then she turns on, uh, T.D. Jakes, and he's going to pull out the water hose, and he's going to start watering the seed, and, and they've got her scratching her head. Now, wait a minute. Uh, how come I never heard this uh, how before? Come I've never that didn't seen stand this? out. Right. It right. wasn't, you know, uh -huh. it didn't stand out before like that. Right. Now it was like, wait a minute, it caught my attention. So if that's true, let's keep on. One you know, plants, every one waters, God gives God an increase. God increasing it, like rapidly. Y yes, yes. Because he wanted me, I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. And I think I come to the end of where it's like you get to the ceiling of where you were, and it's come like on. you get up there and look That's around. And it's like headed. what else is there? There's nothing up, you know. Then he busts open the ceiling, and you go to the next dimension, really. And that dimension is where he was trying to get us all to, so that the truth could be revealed. All of it, right? right. And he's just continuously and, revealing it, and since and that reinforcing yes, it in and, his own word. No. And here we are, yes, and it's a right, in, right his in his word. word. It's all scripture. I was and just here, not in the right. The, I wasn't listening to the right apostle at the time. No, right? We were she listening was, to the She was too busy looking at the blue eyes not instead of what I was saying. Well, yeah, you carry the anointing, well, anyway. the apostolic anointing that <laughs> I think that Paul, the same message mm -hmm. you have been anointed to carry, which was the gospel of grace. In the gospel to the Gentiles, and we had been listening to the gospel that was Peter. according to the for the circumcision, right? right? Never had anybody ever, you know, made the distinction between circumcision and uncircumcision and what that actually meant, right? Right. When you're not familiar with that and don't even and you know take right that into account, yeah. right. what that actually means, you lump everybody together, and you're thinking we're supposed to be a replacement of spiritual Israel now. And everything Israel couldn't do because they didn't have the Holy Ghost. Now we have it and we can do what they couldn't do. That was the thought process. Having missed the rest of the story that the Apostle Paul, which he so eloquently explains in Galatians, makes... <laughs> Let me see. All right. But it makes it... Sorry, yo. It makes it plain mm -hmm. then when you see the distinction, the rightly divided part of it. And once it's rightly divided, it goes, you go, oh, now I see. Now I get it. Now I see what the Apostle Paul was actually saying in, in all of his books. <laughs> right. You know, something. All 14 of them. And something I, you know, speaking of, you know, the circumcision, it's something I found in Romans 15, 8. This is good for you all to know. Romans 15, uh, 
Romans 15, 8, it says that Jesus Christ was a minister to the circumcision, of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the circumcision for the truth of God. Mm -hmm. And if you go eight more scriptures in verse 16, it, here's Paul saying, I am a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. So you see a separate, you see two different, go ahead. Go ahead. No. no what was well, you? I was saying, though, know, he was mm -hmm. saying... Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the mm -hmm. promises made to the unto Jews, the to, to the yep. Jews by the, unto the, the fathers, fathers for them. So right. his purpose was to confirm what all the promises Jesus, had been saying, And so right? you tell a Christian that Jesus' earthly ministry was primarily to the Jews. To and confirm the promises and made to the Jews. And they're going to look at you like you're crazy. And then you try to say Paul brought forth a different part of the gospel. And, and, and he was a minister. He was a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gen Gentiles ministering the gospel of grace. Of God. Of God. That the uh, offering up of the Gentiles yeah, the, might be acceptable. Yeah, through being sanctified. Being <laughs> sanctified by the Holy Spirit. So when you create... You, People think you're creating a division, but Paul says in uh, in Romans two sixteen that people uh, God's going to judge people according uh, the secrets. He's going to judge the secrets, secrets of man heart. according to my gospel. So Paul brought forth a different message than what Jesus' earthly ministry was doing. He different was, purpose. He came to his own, and his own received him not. He says, "I'm only called to the lost sheep of Israel." So we have to look at. You know, you have to rightly divide to see this stuff to bring forth truth, right? Right, and then it also says in that the, so to confirm the promises made mm -hmm. unto the Father, and by <laughs> that that the Gentiles might glorify God for His mercy, mm. as it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee yes. among the Gentiles and sing. So that was a, a prophet's a prophecy. Mm, yeah, <laughs> that it was. Isaiah said, and also. You know, what had prophesied about, you know, so really Jesus was, was he had twofold, a twofold purpose. One was to bring the circumcision, the promises of the, the fathers to the circumcision, and then bring in the Gentiles. That Paul now was the minister uh, or the apostle of, to go and reclaim or claim them. Peter and them didn't do that. The apostle Peter's job, his job was after Christ died, was to go and still minister until the circumcision. So, so Paul and Peter so, had two different parts of the, the, the right. gospel so ministry. Right, so it goes on and on. Different applications. And, right, so. it goes on and on and on. But the reason why we're going through this, because it, it shows... If you don't know this, you can be lost. You're separated. You're Good. suffering from the separation from of, of not knowing truth. And... Man, what you said this morning is just so good. It, it's just another element, another part that gets you thinking of how important it is for people to come to know the truth. When you've been a part of people being so desperate, when you, I see people being desperate. Man, depressed, desperate, trying to reach God, and then beat themselves up, say, God, mad at me because, you know, how come it's not working? How come... It's, you know, God's not moving. God, it takes faith to please God, not works. It takes you knowing that the son was, he said, this is my son who I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. It's everything, he says, the only way, there's only one way to the father, and that's through the son, right? He says, I am the way. That's the only way. And you can't do that way through works. You can't do that way other than believing, having faith on the Son of Jesus Christ. We're about out of time. Do you have anything else that you'd like to share? Well, I think we have kind of highlighted where suffering comes from. Uh -huh. And the suffering, especially to the child of God, to the Christian who... Mm -hmm after believing feels as if they lost their salvation and they oh, lost yeah. the uh, connection on. between God because they told been told they had to do it this way or do it that way and when they failed to do it that way or this way by this prescription then they felt okay there's no hope for me but right. to reconcile a person Sad. and say you know God loves you and that your justification wasn't based on what you did it was what Christ did and what you believed on him what in his finished work 
that opens the door for a greater relationship now between you and God because you thought one way about it and the truth of it was a different way. And he was thinking the whole time, I love you and you're like, you can't love me because I'm bad. And he goes, well, I'm not loving you because of what you've done. I'm loving you because of what my son has done for you. Yeah. And now yeah, he's yeah, wrecking yes. you to be righteous when you mm. believed on what he's done. And there you go. Come that on. creates a different Glory concept of this. Re- what I thought re- this relationship was about from the get-go, you know? So it's anyway. time for the message, the truth to get out. And it's time for us to share, share, share this yes. message tonight. Share our messages. Reach out with the spirit of God that's within you, that living God on the inside of you, and speak and plant seeds in, in, in the scriptures. You know, go to the scriptures because that, that scripture, that word is anointed, and it breaks the yokes of bondage. It breaks, it. there's a, like I said, there's a time that, that the God uses you, and it puts you in a place. And man, just to see a family member so close to me that, that's so separated and suffering and dealing with I'm, I'm, she, honestly there was some videos that were shown that I've seen some stuff I was like wow it's you know there's darkness out there there is darkness out there that comes through yeah. it yeah. comes through that su- that separation and it's yeah, that's the, oh, the way it enters in. yeah, it that's enters the door. into the mind it's yeah. all it's all in the mind, mind and your mind be out your mind mm-hmm. wherever your mind is you're going to manifest whatever your mind is at thinking. if As you're thinking separation if you're thinking uh, separated from God or your mind has been focused on on dark things or involved in dark things and those things are going to manifest in your life hallelujah mm-hmm. but after I prayed she said man I feel things the chains breaking off my I mean you could just even though it was over the phone, I could feel the freedom that she was having, crying, and, and just things that was broken off of her. Because, see, we have that power. We have that power, especially, he said, did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Once you receive that Spirit by the hearing of faith, then the righteous prayers becomes of much. Uh, they develop much, and you become more powerful, mm-hmm. I really believe, because you're speaking truth. You're speaking wholeness. You're speaking deliverance. Speaking life. You're speaking the true the life and that, life. The yep. word that gives life. Yes, it does. Right? Hallelujah, <laughs> man. You know, we just wanted to break it out. You know, because I see so many people that you know the, that's suffering from separation of not knowing that you are one with Christ. You mm-hmm. are one with Christ. Ain't nothing you can do that can separate you from the love. Nothing you can you've ever done nothing that you can do can That's never separate you from the love of god man because he is right there as he is so are we he's right there one with you and i'm going to pray and i am asking you guys to share 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 this and i'm asking you all I'm, I, I want you all to reach out to family members reach out to ones close because there's many people that's running around with a fake smile on right now and even they're believing on Christ and they're going to church every Sunday and they're in the word and they're in Bible study but they are still suffering because they have not there's still a separation of their knowledge and I'm asking you all to reach out to the closest ones that's around you because you know Jesus says that that the harvest is plenty, the labors are few, but the harvest is always right, and it's plenty. There's all over the place. So I want to thank you guys before we pray tonight. I want to thank you guys for tuning in and supporting and and being a part of you know of this fellowship that we get to you know fellowship with you guys. I love that you guys put all the comments on here. I mean that's encouraged me, you know, encouraging to us to see that that we're you know we're in it together we are in it together to bring people to this light it's so awesome it's so amazing each and every one of you brings a a, each and every one of you brings a gift Uh, you're chosen your god chosen you before the foundations of the world Mm -hmm. that you would be here today hallelujah Mm -hmm. uh i thought you were tapping me but you were petting knucklehead uh (laughs) We love you guys. We thank you for joining. I want you all to come together in agreement right now because 
I really feel that there are so many people in the Christian way and a lot of different religions that are separated from God because that's what they've been taught. And we we're gonna we're gonna come together in agreement right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, yes. Father God. We just love you. Amen. And we just praise you, Father God. I speak to each and every family member, each and every uh, bloodline, to everybody that's listening right now. Man, I speak, I just, I'm feeling this impartation of the Holy Spirit of truth, of revelation knowledge, that it rushed through the veins and the blood cells into the minds of your people, Father God, that you use whoever's listening to us right now to reach out to the family members in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to bring the light, Father God, to take time out and sit down with the word with them and say, whew, let me show you something that's so powerful. Hmm. Let me so, show you something that you've never seen before. Let me show you something that brought me to this freedom. Let, hmm. let me renew the mind. I promise people who are suffering, whew, oh my goodness, people that's out there suffering, they are hungry for you just to reach out to them. They are, they are seeking God. They are striving to get to God. They are climbing and, and, and they're trying to get there. And believe me, they might, they, there's a lot of people act like they got it together and they know everything, but they don't. Man, but they're on the inside, they're still hungry. Because if you don't have the truth, you're hungry. If you don't have, if you're not getting fed with this by the Spirit of the living God, of the Holy Spirit, of truth, you, you're, you're hungry. You're starving. You're suffering from that separation. And, I mean, I'm just praying right into that, that, man, God just use you people. Use you people to reach out to the loved ones and anyone that's around you and take time to sit down with them no matter what kind of fight they give you mm -hmm. man plant those seeds anyone that pushes a plow and looks back it's not fit for the kingdom of god because he knew it was going to take a plow to renounce everything that the enemy and that religious mindset has put over people right now i'm asking you god to give them strength father god that they're able to push that plow to break those yokes of bondage that's that's been yoked around people's necks that they come to know the love of the father the unconditional agape love of the father father god continue to do what only you can do i speak forth a mandate right now i speak forth the spirit to move on people right now father god that you have chosen and maybe you know they felt like they wasn't good enough hallelujah but father God you're telling them they are ready they are good enough because God says you're good enough and you as he is so are we in this world so we are one with Christ so if you have the spirit in you you are ready you are ready to bring forth this light man there's it's priceless to bring people to this light and see the change in them and then they look at you like oh man Dude, you don't even know what you have done. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you have done in my life. Mm -hmm. You don't know the fear that's left. You don't mm -hmm. know that the there's no more separation. There's no more needing to try to qualify yourself mm -hmm. to get to God. Come there's up. no more having to um, to fear of your jobs. Uh, there, mm -hmm. it, it becomes it, it's the favor, of grace of God begins mm -hmm. to move in your marriage. Yeah to where expectations and rules and regulations starts to leave yeah. and love begins to flow. Mm -hmm. And once the love yeah. flows, you don't need the expectations because it's yeah. everything is fulfilled mm -hmm. in His love. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Father God, continue to do this in yeah. people's minds. I pray that you receive this. I yeah. pray that you receive this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you guys, man. Whew. What you got? What you got to say, Doc? What you got to say, Doc? You got something you want to say? You got something? I heard him say it before he said it. So you got something to say? God bless you guys. Thanks for. Hey, we will see you Sunday as I continue on Sunday. Amen. Oh my God, it gets good Sunday. It's a different part. It's all part of the same brokenness, but there's so many different avenues and ways to get this message out. God bless you guys. We love you.
Love you, Chuck. Good to see you on here. God bless you. Yes. Good to see Cheryl. Even though you're late, I'll send you a tart. Uh, I'll give you a pass this time. What do they think? What are those things in school? You give tardy. Me a tardy. Tardy pass. Slip. A, a tardy slip. There yeah, it is. Cheryl, it's been, it's been a while, been but Cheryl, I'm gonna give you a tardy slip. God bless you. Love you guys. Talk yes. to you. All right, y'all. Y'all have a good night. Enjoy your relationship with the Lord.